سلام علیکم و رحمت الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم اخرجني من ظلمات الوهن واكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا ابواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to have our weekly sessions on islamic plan for life and then inshallah on نهج البلاغه for Islamic plan for life, our topic tonight is truthfulness. And this is actually the last topic from Unit 2 of the book. Unit 2 is about social values and truthfulness is the last one. Although truthfulness can have a personal aspect because you can be truthful to yourself also or not truthful but mostly it's between us and others maybe other people maybe between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore it is put in the unit 2 on social values this lesson starts with a story uh, from the time that late Imam Khomeini used to be in Nofle Chateau near Paris in 1979. They wanted to make a documentary about a typical day of Imam Khomeini as the leader of opposition at that time. And one of the things that they wanted to show in that documentary was his meals, what he eats, and the people with him for lunch, for dinner. So the day that they were going to film the lunch was, or the dinner was very simple. Although he had always simple meals, but that day was more simple because sometimes maybe they had also meat or chicken, but that day was very simple, maybe eggs or something. So Imam Khomeini said, this is not truthful, this is not honest, because we are not eating every day like this. Although this was not planned, this was not artificial, this was not fake, but he said, this is not our typical, our everyday meal. We sometimes have better, sometimes have less. This shows how careful was this person in the middle of his revolution, leading a revolution. People are on the streets lots of difficulties but these uh, small things in the eyes of people or many people are great in the eyes of such people because they know that everything is a matter of serving the truth and by not being honest or extra honest we cannot work for the truth there is a, another story which is not in the book during the war between Iran and Iraq, the war that Saddam Hussein had imposed. So one day Imam Khomeini wrote a letter and was a statement. And in that statement he had said to the people who were, you know, defending the country the soldiers, etc., that I pray for you with my entire being. 
تمام وجود این فارسی وی سی سمتم اینو با تمام وجود فر اگزامپل اینو I love you by تمام وجود or I you know, promise this or, you know, or pray for you means with my entire being then before it was read he asked the letter to be brought back to him and he changed that and said I cannot say I pray for them با تمام وجود with my entire being I can say I pray a lot for you, but I cannot say So he changed it. Another story that remained in my mind is that when he was in Najaf before Paris, for about 15 years he was in Najaf. Once some people attributed something to him and they were also people who were against the regime they were active so somehow they were close to the line of Imam Khomeini which was trying to help people against the king and the Ras regime but they attributed something to Imam Khomeini and he heard about it and he wanted to reject. Some of his students, they said, you know, these are people that are working for the same cause and if you say that what they quoted from you is not correct, they will be damaged and you know it's not good etc please listen very carefully this is the way a leader can keep his own house his own camp clear and clean because if you compromise little by little these things get to the extent that they can take over and the ev evil will take over virtues. He said, if someone says that I told him La ilaha illallah, which is the most obvious fact in Islam, such a fundamental fact, La ilaha illallah. If someone says, I, late, I heard from Imam Khomeini, or Ayatollah Khomeini or etc that he said La ilaha illallah for example we were in a meeting with him in Najaf and he said La ilaha illallah he said if someone quotes La ilaha illallah from me and I have not said this I would deny no one should allow himself to misquote me so his own emphasis on saying the truth even a small things that may, we, we think these are you know not a problem with my entire being or not so careful about that so careful about not any person misusing him and quoting him in a wrong way etc so these are some examples from our time and are good to help us appreciate the topic of tonight in Islam said is not only about telling the truth said is more comprehensive said in action, in words, in intention, in faith, lots of dimensions, inshallah, we'll talk about Sadq. But a very important aspect of Sadq is to tell the truth. So although truthfulness or Sadq is not limited to a speech, but Sadq al-Hadith 
is a very important part of it. Because many things somehow go back to this or would be affected by this or would be tested by this. So we need to be truthful in every dimension of our being. But for sure, a very important aspect is being truthful in our speech. It's like the gate to the realm of truthfulness. If I tell the truth, then this would little by little bring harmony to my being. My words are honest, then my actions are honest, my intentions are honest, my promises are honest, everything becomes honest. Once a person went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had four bad habits. He was used to making four sins. Drinking khamra, theft, immoral action and behavior relations, adultery. And lying. So, شرب الخمر, سرقة, فحشاء, and كذب. He had, unfortunately, habit of making these four sins. He said to the Prophet, I cannot stop all these four. You tell me which one is most important to stop. Tell me one of them. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him not to tell lies. Avoid kithb. He said, okay. And he thought, okay, he just, done, he just tries not to t let, uh, tell lies and he can continue with the rest. But when he left, Whatever he wanted to do, which was bad, like adultery, I don't know, theft, etc., he was telling himself, if I do this and Rasulullah asks me, did you do this or not? I cannot say I did this. And I cannot say lie to Rasulullah. So avoiding kids led to avoiding all other sins. Because when you are honest and truthful, you behave in the way that you don't need to tell lies later. This is one reason why in our hadith it says, if all the bad things are put together in one room and locked, the key to that room is kethb. For example, Muhammad ibn Muslim in an authentic hadith quotes from Imam Baghir alayhi salam Inna Allah azza wa jal ja'ala lishare aqfalan wa ja'ala mafatiha tilka al-aqfal al-sharab wal-kithbu sharrun min al-sharab This is one of those hadiths one is that says all are in one room and Kesb is the key. This one is similar. It says, Allah has put locks for sharr. For every evil action, there is a lock. And sharab, khamr, is the key. Is the key for all those locks. But kesb is worse than sharab. Because someone who is lying, intentionally is lying, and there is also no limit. He would tell lies here, there, everywhere. And he's harming other people. Someone who is drinking khamr, he is mostly harming himself, his health, his relations, his business, his family, his reputation. Of course, this is wrong, but 
he is not that much harming other people directly sometimes they do but not always but the lying starts with harming people misguiding people deceiving people etc and those who get for example drunk and they don't understand this happens maybe rarely rest of the day they are okay but a liar day night every time may lie tell lies so Rasulullah told him avoid kithb tell lie and he stopped by that all other four th all four th bad things the next heading is about truthfulness being a test, a criterion for understanding Iman, faith, taqwa. If you want to examine ourselves or other people and see whether we are okay or not, whether we are on the right track or not, whether we are mu'min or not, how can we test? How can we examine? Is prayer enough? Is fasting enough? Is Hajj enough? No. Because these are things that people may do habitually. They are used to these things. We need something that it's always a serious indicator of faith. Our Hadith says if you want to test people, test them with Sadq al Hadith wa Ada al Aman. For example, Ishaq ibn Ammar and others have quoted from Imam Sadiq al Islam in an authentic Hadith. La taghtarru bi salatihim wala bi siyamihim. Don't be deceived by their prayer nor by their fasting. فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ رُبَمَا لَهِجَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ حَتَّى لَوْ تَرَكَهُ اسْتَوْحَشَ Sometimes a person has so much said prayer and fasted that if he doesn't say prayer or fast, he feels bad. It has become a habit. <laughs> you see sometimes people, for example, they know that by Sharia they shouldn't fast. But still they say that we must fast <laughs> because it has become a habit. وَلَكِنْ اِخْتَبِرُوهُمْ عِنْدَ صِدْقِ الْحَدِيثِ وَأَدَاءِ الْأَمَانَةِ But test them when it's a matter of telling the truth. Do they tell the truth or not? وَأَدَاءِ الْأَمَانَةِ Delivering of the trust to be trustworthy. Are they delivering the trust or not? We discussed this in the discussion before about trustworthiness. So this is a sign of Iman. And na'udhu billah, if someone is a liar, this is a sign of lacking Iman. In some hadith says, a moment may make some mistakes, may commit some sins, but a moment never tells lies. This is very much in conflict with the core of Iman, which is to accept the truth and open yourself to the truth, to dedicate yourself to the truth. A liar cannot be mu'min. There is a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Again, again, this is authentic. Hussein ibn Abi al-Ala quotes from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Inna Allah azza wa jal lam yab'ath nabiyyan illa bisadq al-hadith wa ada' al-amanah ila al Allah has not raised any messenger out of 124,000 prophets. Even one single prophet cannot be found. That Allah has not made condition for them to observe and promote Sadq al Hadith. Tell the truth, number one, 
and to deliver the trust back whether good people have entrusted you or bad people it doesn't matter you have to give them back you remember we, we mentioned this in the discussion about trustworthiness that even if the sword by which Amir al muminin was killed is given as Amana Imam says I will give it back so it's a sign of Iman and dedication to tell the truth what are some obstacles why some people fail to tell the truth why maybe we sometimes fail to observe the truth according to our hadith there are several things can that can be mentioned one is not to be of a high and great caliber not to have self-esteem to be mean a mean person who has no regard for himself always looks for quick solutions shortcuts whether they are moral or not whether they are you know acceptable or not doesn't matter because there are so much feeling inferior and low that they think I can not wait for a virtuous way to come up I should get what comes available quickly they don't trust themselves they don't have self-confidence they don't have self-esteem therefore they tell lies and cheat so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for example is quoted as saying a liar doesn't tell lies unless it is because of feeling mean or low or inferior inside there is such a bad opinion about themselves and understanding of themselves therefore the best solution for getting rid of <coughs> dishonesty and telling lies is to empower ourselves with tawheed and with capacity that Allah has given to every human being tawheed tells us that Allah is the only supplier of good all good comes from him and if he wants to give me something no one can stop him and if he doesn't want to give me no one can force him Quran says أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإن يمسسك الله بضر فلا كاشف له إلا هو If Allah wants a difficulty come to you some harm comes to you no one can disperse it وإن يمسسك بخير فهو على كل شيء خدير And if he wants good to come to you he is capable of doing everything so we should improve our relation with him and we should rely on him does he want us to be dishonest no so why we are depriving ourselves from support of Rabbul Alameen who has control over everything and he has the supplier of everything why we displease him by telling lies and why we don't trust the capacity the power that Allah has given every human being that if you rely on Allah and then work hard you can succeed you don't need to cheat you don't need to do zulm to yourself or others and many times 
you think maybe by li lying you benefit yourself but in reality this even if it is true which many times is not true it's only for a short period of time in the long term no liar is successful no one loves them no one wants to promote them or get close to them Even enemies appreciate those who are truthful, let alone friends. Imam Zainul Abidin said, avoid lies, whether they are small or big, whether they are serious or humorous, you should avoid any kind of lie. Because little by little it gets bigger and bigger so you have to stop in the first place also we have another hadith from Amir al-Mu'min which says no servant of Allah would taste Iman unless he or she would avoid and refrain from lying Hatta yatruk al -kith. Whether it's serious or it's a joke. If I say a joke by telling lie and people think I am telling the truth, this is a problem. If from the beginning it's known that it is not true, then it might be okay. If from the beginning it's clear, it's obvious, but sometimes in order to make joke at the beginning, it's not clear <laughs> and people you know, think other way and this is why they laugh. This is a problem. It's a big problem. Some of these lies have moral problems, some of them have moral and legal problems. Some are just against spirituality. Some are against spirituality and also from fiqh perspective, they are sins. There is a story here in the section for self-study about some people visited Rasulullah and Rasulullah offered them some milk and they maybe felt embarrassed or for any reason they said, you know, we don't need, we are okay we are good and Rasulullah said you are hungry and you are not truthful this is two problems and he said even if someone says a small lie this would be registered in the record of his deeds so if someone says have you had your dinner don't say yes if you didn't have your dinner or someone says you know come and join us and you say I'm not hungry and you are hungry this is a lie and should be avoided and Rasulullah had the responsibility to clarify and to teach people and for sure they were happy to be guided and instructed by the Prophet so this is a lesson for all of us that even in such things we should not be taking you know liberty in uh, speaking some of the outcomes of telling the truth number one those who tell the truth would be very close to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like people who have good akhlaq that we had before there is a beautiful hadith that Allama Majlisi Rahmatullah Alayhi has mentioned. Rasulullah said, Aqrabukum minni ghadan fil mawqif. The nearest of you to me on the Day of Judgment are astaqukum lil hadith. Those of you who are the most truthful ones in their speech. 
و آدا کم لل امانه ان مور تراسورثی و اوفا کم بالعهد مور لویال تو در کاوننس و احسن کم خلقن who have the best temper و اقرب کم من الناس who are closest to people they are humble and kind with people these people would be closest to me on the day of judgment so by telling the truth we have this privilege of getting inshallah in a, to a high position near the prophet also there is a great reward promised by allah for those who are truthful in surah al-maidah chapter 5 verse 109 Allah says, قال الله هذا يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم. This is the day that truthfulness would benefit the truthful people. يوم ينفع الصاد يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم. لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار. They have gardens underneath of those gardens, rivers flow, they would be there forever. Allah is pleased with them, they are pleasing, pleased with Allah. This is great achievement. So it is all for Sadiqin. Also, in another place in Surah Ahzab, verse 24, Allah says, لِيَجْزِيَ اللَّهُ الصَّادِقِينَ بِالصِّدْقِهِمْ So that Allah would reward truthful people because of their truthfulness. So you will benefit from this in the hereafter by having great reward. Also truthfulness would lead to more good actions. When you are honest and truthful, this will pave the way for doing good things. Because kidb takes barakah from life, takes away tawfiq. But truthfulness brings tawfiq, brings barakah. A person who tells the truth he would try to also be truthful in intentions, in actions, in everything. Otherwise, he would find it a contradiction. Truthfulness also would cause respect. People would love people who are truthful in society. Such people are very much appreciated. Also, those who tell the truth little by little can rise to the level of being Siddiq. You first tell the truth, then you become Sadiq, then you become Siddiq. And Siddiq is most truthful. Someone that every aspect of their behavior and their heart is truthful, is in harmony with the truth. From them actually you can understand what does it mean to be with the truth? They become signs of the truth, those who are Siddiq. In Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 69, we have this beautiful ayah that explains who are those that Allah has bestowed His blessings upon them. Alladheena an'amta alayhim, that we have in Surah Hamd, are defined in this ayah. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Those who obey God and the Messenger, they are with the people that Allah has bestowed His blessings upon them. Who are those people that Allah has bestowed His blessing upon them, that we want to be with them? مِنَ nabiyin Prophets. Number two. والصديقين, the most truthful people. It's such an important thing that even Allah about prophets, He praises them with being Siddiq. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ 
innahu kana sadiqan nabiyya it's very important lady mary maryam salamullah alayha allah says wa ummuhu sadiqa she was sadiqa which is female form for sadiq wa shuhada wa salihin so min an-nabiyin prophets wa sadiqin the most truthful ones wa shuhada the witnesses wa salihin the righteous people so these are four categories that are at the top and of course they can overlap like ibrahim is sadiq and nabi at the same time and he asked to be, join Salihin, Al-Haqni bi Salihin. Wa hasuna ula'ika rafiqa. These are very good rafiq. These are moderate friends, considerate friends with whom you can travel and you know they would be very considerate. So to be sadiq leads to become sadiq which then makes you at one of those four top categories Amir al-Mumin salam said a truthful person by telling the truth would get three things and these three are not the only things but as examples people trust him people love to make friends friendship with him and people would have awe towards him. They respect him a lot. There's a hadith here also, it was very important that how telling lies can affect even our financial situation. Imam Sadiq says, sometimes a person tells a lie. Because of lying, then he loses tawfiq for salatul layl. Or prayer of night and then when he loses Salatul Layl his rizq would be decreased because Salatul Layl is very good for getting more rizq more sustenance so telling a lie would lead to even your financial situation becoming affected what are the signs of the people who are truthful one sign is that their actions and words are confirming each other they don't contradict they're in harmony with each other the other is that they are muhsan they do good things they are benefactors the other thing is that they have peace of mind they have confidence and they are not all the time disturbed all the time you know worried what happens if people realize i told a lie and you know many times people who tell lies even uh, if they have good memory, their memory becomes terrible. Many times they make mistakes. They report in different ways, in different times, because they are so much worried. This is why some you know, machines can detect liars. Maybe not 100%, but sometimes you know, they use them even in the courts, because those who tell lies, they are disturbed internally those who have truthfulness as a quality also they know that they should not say everything everywhere so you you shouldn't become a tape recorder that whatever is recorded you say so whatever you have seen or heard you know you say no Sometimes a truthful person may not share the truth that he knows with other people because, for example, it becomes backbiting. It damages reputation of someone. It can endanger life of people, innocent people. It can create division and fight and enmity. If someone says something bad about his wife, for example, to me or his father-in-law to me, and I say to that person what I have heard truthfully, <laughs> I don't add anything, I don't distract anything, uh, extract anything, but is this acceptable? No. Bilhaq doesn't mean just to tell the truth, it means something that is at the service of the 
greater truth. So you have to be careful. You hate lying. But it doesn't mean that you have to tell all the truth to everyone, everywhere, every time. Especially when it is leading to fight or enmity among people when it leads to injustice when it leads to disclosing secrets of people or secrets of the country secrets maybe of a company that you have to respect you are working in this company then the rivals want to get the secrets to bring them down you cannot say because i am truthful i tell everything to everyone so you have to be careful On the other hand, there can be exceptional cases, very exceptional cases, in which lying or telling lies might be permitted or even expected. Very exceptionally uh, defined cases. One is Eslahu Dhat al If the only way to bring two brothers I don't know, husband and wife, in-laws, partners. The only way to bring them close and reconcile is to tell a lie. Then you are permitted. Of course, first you try not to tell lies. You try other means or you try just to do toria, which means you say something that can have two meanings and you mean the one that that person, you know, doesn't think and he takes another one but if needed and there's no other way normally say for the sake of reconciliation it is okay telling truth that adds to the problem is not permitted this is facade this is mischief but telling a lie for reconciliation can be permitted it shows how important it is to contribute to unity in family in community etc rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said according to this hadith which is narrated by sheikh hurra amili in wasail al-shi'a in allah azza wa jal احب الكذب في الصلاح وأبغض الصدق في الفساد. الله the Almighty loves or likes lying if it is for reconciliation, and he dislikes telling the truth if it is leading to mischief. So this is something also to remember. Finally, conclusion. So as a summary, we said that truthfulness is one of the most important factors for human improvement, human perfection, human upliftment for person, for society, for both. It has lots of benefits for us individually and socially. And such people have peace in mind good relation with other people, high position in the society and wherever they are. And according to Islam, salvation is in truthfulness. And all the problems go back to telling lies and being dishonest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who have truthfulness. And Rasulullah said, among you, those who are most truthful, those who are most trustworthy, those who are best in their temper, those who are closest to people would be closest to me. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among the truthful people. Allah says, Ittaqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. You must have taqwa, you must fear God and be with those who are truthful. Having taqwa alone is not possible. You have to be with good people. 
and you have to be one of them first you try to be close to them you try to follow them but then inshallah you will become one of them alhamdulillah rabbil alamin